While all food webs are complex, it is possible that the oceanic food web is the most complex of them all. And part of that reason is that it encompasses hundreds of different ecosystems, from tropical coral reefs, to the Arctic waters up by the glaciers, to the deep, deep ocean where we still don't really know what's going on down there, all the way to coastal kelp forests where we see tons and tons of life. And all of these different ecosystems, while some of them are on different ends of the earth from one another, they're all connected in some way, shape, or form. And one of those connectors, which we're going to talk about again in a couple minutes, is phytoplankton. And phytoplankton is essentially just teeny tiny little pieces of plant matter that float all throughout the ocean in the currents and they can travel huge distances. They're also connected by some migratory species. So if you picture an animal like a whale who's going to be traveling from the really, really cold waters up by the North Pole all the way down to the tropics by the equator, and while they're making that journey every year, they're going to be bringing nutrients with them and dropping it off as they go. And to make it even more confusing, sometimes the ocean food web combines with the terrestrial food web or the food web on land. So if you think about animals like a seabird who are diving in to get fish or a sea otter who's swimming way down deep to get sea urchins, those animals are connecting the oceanic food web and the terrestrial food web, which just makes it even more complicated. So there's really no way that we would be able to identify all the different food webs in the ocean. So we're just gonna break down a teeny tiny little snippet of one. As we mentioned before, phytoplankton makes up the foundation for most of the ocean food web. Phytoplankton are just tiny little free-floating plants that drift all around the ocean, and they usually float, so they like to hang out near the ocean's surface where they can photosynthesize and create energy. Phytoplankton are often consumed by krill, and krill are just tiny little shrimp-like crustaceans that, like the phytoplankton, they float around in the ocean, and they actually will eat the tiny little phytoplankton, which makes them a primary consumer. Krill are a favorite food source for whale sharks, which are filter feeders. So they're swimming around with their giant mouths open, sucking in a whole bunch of tiny organisms. So they're eating a lot of krill, but they're also eating a lot of that phytoplankton. So they're both a primary and a secondary consumer. That krill is also eaten by small fish, which are then eaten by large predatory fish, which sometimes can be eaten by sharks, which makes them a quaternary consumer. So remember, we were talking about how there can be even more consumers than tertiary. This is one of those examples. Those sharks will also eat small fish if given the chance. So while the whale sharks and krill really enjoy the phytoplankton, so do jellyfish. And jellyfish will float around and slurp up that phytoplankton and that makes them a primary consumer. However, jellyfish have a lot of predators and they're a really good source of protein for sea turtles. And sea turtles themselves can actually become prey for a lot of different animals, including sharks and shorebirds. And those shorebirds will also eat small fish. And those jellies as they're floating around, they also could become prey for large fish and for the sharks. So that, in this specific food chain, makes the shark secondary and tertiary, tertiary consumers in the same food chain. Now I know we only covered a couple of species there, but if we continued to add species, that food web would just keep growing and growing and growing and would get even more complicated. So we did the best we could covering just a small little portion of the oceanic food web, but you guys can keep thinking. Go ahead, keep adding species and see what you can come up with. Draw in your own arrows and see if you can figure out how energy flows through the ecosystem when you add more species in. Thank you guys so much for learning with us today. I hope you guys are feeling really excited about food webs and ready to go share with all your friends. Have a great day.